Hello watch lovers, friends old and new, welcome back to the channel. My name is Theon and today we have a brand on the bench that uh, a lot of people probably don't know so much about. It's a brand called Pierce and they have a pretty interesting uh, backstory. We can see from the crystal on this one that this is also a drawer warrior. It is a triple calendar moon face. And it seems like the dial actually looks pretty good underneath, but that uh, crystal is just too uh, roughed up. The watch is not running and it cannot be wound any further, so it's probably been lying still for quite a while. As you might see, there's also something strange going on with the time setting. It uh, does work, but it's a little bit rough. See the date changes as it should. There are four pushers in a case, one for the date, one for the weekday, one for the month, and one for the moon phase. And they more or less work, but uh, we see they're not completely uh, eager to uh, do their jobs. But from what we can see, the dial looks uh, very nice, and the case is in pretty good condition. It is gold-plated. It's a little bit worn here and there, but overall pretty okay. The watch seems to be from uh, late 1940s or perhaps early 1950s. So for that age, it's uh, in pretty good condition. Now, before going any deeper in uh, this watch, let's uh, get back to the second seagull giveaway from the Oris video. Drum roll, please. The second seagull goes to Frank Abate. Very cool to see. I know Frank has been a long time viewer of the channel, so congrats, Frank. I will respond to your comment in the video and then we'll take it from there. Now let's get back to the Pierce and let's also get back to yesterday's voice because man, I sound different today. This is uh, Pierce caliber uh, 103. It's uh, not at all a surprise to find a Pierce in house caliber inside the watch as they used only in-house calibers uh, between about 1925 and 1955. The reason is actually that uh, they were approached by uh, a Bosch SA, the forerunner to ETA, to join them in the late 1920s as they were sort of consolidating all the uh, movement makers and uh, watchmakers in Switzerland. When uh, Leon Levy, the owner and founder of uh, Pierce, said, uh, no, we want to do something else, then uh, Bosch SA said, okay, but uh, then you're going to do it without our movements. So Pierce was pretty much forced to uh, invent. And yes, there are some parallels to uh, today's market, where uh, the Swatch Group and Etta is basically saying that uh, they don't want to provide the movements anymore. So you are actually seeing a lot of uh, manufacturers make their own movements nowadays as well. But then also with uh, other manufacturers of uh, movements like uh, Celita, Sopro, the STP and so forth, uh, making basically ETA clones. Anyway, we got the movement out of the case and uh, the dial indeed looks uh, very nice. few marks here and there, but uh, I think I'll be happy if I have a few marks here and there when I'm uh, 70, 80 years old. My wife would probably volunteer that I have a few marks already. And don't get me started on my kids. Little rascals. The keen observer might have seen that I was looking for uh, the dial screws and one of them is uh, missing. So we'll keep that in mind. Anyway, with the dial off, we see uh, the different wheels. We see there's some dirt on the weekday wheel. And yes, that is a harbinger of uh, things to come later on. So we saw that the weekday corrector works. Well, let's try the other correctors as well. month works keep 
my sausage fingers off the weekday, then uh, it's easier to see. The date works. And the moon phase works. All right, that's good news. So four watches where we have uh, parts under tension. We want to first relieve that tension before we start uh, taking anything off. And by the way, we see that that jumper there is a little bit stuck, so let's leave it for now. So uh, we relieve this spring here, for instance, uh, that holds down two of the correctors before we try to take the corrector off. Otherwise, you're probably going to find yourself on uh, all four on the floor. Wishing you didn't install that uh, very thick and luscious wall-to-wall -wall carpet. So there's a very clear logic in the layout of uh, these kinds of watches. Basically, each of these discs have a star wheel underneath. Each star wheel uh, then is held in place by uh, these jumpers. So one jumper per disc or per wheel. And in addition, you have uh, one corrector per disc or per star wheel, actually. So it's uh, very clear logic. It's uh, a lot of parts and a lot of screws. A lot of uh, shouldered screws in uh, calendar works like this. So what you see me doing is basically just put the screws back in place as soon as I take the part off. Then it's uh, less chance of mixing things up. And if a jumper like this one is stuck, you really don't want to grab it by the thin end. Then you risk uh, either bending it or breaking it, so uh, keep that in mind. With some easy nudging, we managed to uh, get it off in the end. Whoa! Airborne! Hello! You make a video? No? What can I help you rascals with them? Um, can we print something? Oh, yeah. So what we have here are the three driving wheels for the calendar works. Hang on a second. There are four different parts of the calendar works, right? You have the date, you have the weekday, you have the month and the moon phase. So why would there be three wheels and not four? Well, the month does not change over as part of the movement. It has to be manually set. And it's not that strange. Even if the month would change over automatically at 31, you would still have to manually set it five out of 12 months. What? Da, da, da. Yeah, that was our missing dial screw. So uh, no wonder that uh, hand setting was a little bit rough. It was difficult to see, but there was also a little bit of uh, brass shavings on the screw. So that also means that the minute wheel probably uh, has gotten a little bit damage on the teeth. We'll see how much that impacts things, but uh, yeah, it has definitely been a long time since this movement was uh, serviced. We're uh, also gonna start uh, what I hope is not becoming a new tradition in this video, and that is a hair count. It's uh, too early to tell if those are nose hairs. Let's have a look at the balance. We see this balance does not have a shock protection system. It has a capsule, but uh, no springs, no nothing. So uh, it is a little bit more prone to damage.
it also has this relatively old school uh, way of uh, driving the seconds pinion. We see this driving wheel on top of the extended uh, third wheel pivot. That is something you see in uh, quite a few watches from uh, the 40s. To take this uh, wheel off, uh, we're going to use this uh, specialized uh, tool for that. And that tool needs some support to press against. So that's why we use this little uh, metal plate there. And we can take the wheel off without damaging the wheel nor the extended pivot. So there seems to be a lot of power on the mainspring. But we do remember that uh, the watch was fully wound and not running. So let's see what the reason for that is. There is a lot of dirt. And we see the train is not free. One word of caution when uh, something is not free, like uh, in this watch, never use force. That's going to break something. See, there's a little bit too much shake there for uh, the barrel arbor and the barrel bridge. But there's not a lot of wear. So that's not enough to have stopped uh, the watch from running. Oh, this must be our lucky day. Let's check the various wheels for uh, shakes. You see the wheels do move when we uh, touch them. But uh, the power from uh, our hand and the tweezers uh, touching them is uh, multiples more than uh, what they get from the mainspring. So we see it still does not run free. Let's take the train bridge off and see what uh, lurks underneath. Da, da, da. How on earth that hair got there, I do not know, but it is enough to stop the movement. Kind of enough to uh, stop me uh, wanting to eat dinner as well, but anyway. The thing is, if a hair or fiber does get caught in a train, it uh, will uh, tangle up around the pivot. And that will stop the train. A small hair on the fourth wheel as well, so we can uh, clean that off in some Robico. And of course the third wheel doesn't want to be alone. Small hair there as well. So while we take off uh, the last uh, few parts, uh, I wanted to talk a little bit more about uh, Pierce as a brand. It is a brand that uh, does not exist anymore, at least not in uh, the spirit it was founded. It was founded in 1883 in uh, the town of Biel, or Bien. And as I think I mentioned already, the founder uh, was uh, Leon Levy, together with his brother. It actually was a pretty successful business for uh, quite some time. They were the biggest employer in Beale uh, in the early uh, 1900s, employing uh, about 6-7% of the entire population of the city. Then they had this uh, little fallout with uh, Eboshesa, as I mentioned, in the late 1920s. And that really forced them to innovate and come up with some pretty unusual uh, designs. One of them was a linear automatic, where the whole movement actually uh, worked as a weight and moved up and down, and thus uh, winding the barrel. Pretty unusual, and uh, these watches are uh, quite collectible. Not expensive, but uh, pretty cool. Somewhat fragile, though. Another uh, kind of unusual design was the Caliber 130 chronograph. It had registers at uh, 6 and 12 o'clock which was quite unusual at the time, became quite popular. 
was among others uh, adopted by the British Royal Air Force. And while we're talking, we see some seriously dirty uh, pieces here in uh, the Achilles works. When we see this kind of dirt, then we do want to uh, pre-clean it a little bit. Otherwise, we'll have to change our cleaning liquids a bit more often than we want to. So back to the inventions. Caliber 130 was also one of the first to use uh, plastic parts as a central component of uh, movement. The problem was that it used uh, plastic as the absolutely central part. The central wheel in the chronograph was uh, made of plastic. And that uh, does make for quite a few problems uh, with the movement uh, years later. All right, with everything uh, taken uh, apart, let's uh, clean the base plates a little bit. Gonna peg the jewel holes. Gonna put the balance back in place uh, before putting uh, the movement through the cleaning machine. And we're gonna clean the pivots of the wheels a little bit. So I have this pin vise and I have this uh, little stick called the Eve Flex. And then I uh, use that to uh, gently clean the pivots. It doesn't polish them, but it does clean them pretty well. Today, Papa, uh, when I got the football cards, I got Neymar Jr. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Good. Neymar is a good player, huh? Yeah. Yeah, I was thinking maybe you and I can start watching some football together on Saturday or Sunday. Because it's probably some football on TV those days. You want to do that? Okay. But mama, Papa, mm -hmm. next time when we go shopping, can we go back to me going, I, can I use my money to buy some of the football cards? Yeah. Okay. One pack wasn't so expensive. Like it was one one franc and ten cents. Yeah. And um, you get you can get six cards if you're very lucky, and but you have to get five at least. Yeah. If you don't, then you're the most unluckiest person in the world. Okay. Bye. Okay. Bye. bye. See you in about five minutes. See you five minutes. All right, we got everything disassembled. Last thing is to get the mainspring out of the barrel. And then we have all the parts uh, disassembled. Time to let the cleaning uh, machine do its magic. So while the cleaning machine takes uh, 33 minutes to do its uh, job, I did go to have dinner with my family, but uh, after that, let's uh, look at the case. Pretty cool case, uh, I think. Very interesting shape. These uh, pushers are uh, very simple. There's no uh, spring or anything holding them back. That's all taken care of in the movement. So we can simply push them out. A couple of them are a little bit uh, dirty. Also a lot of dirt around uh, the stem on the crown. So we're going to pre-clean that a little bit as well. And then we can put uh, the case together with the bezel and the back uh, into uh, the ultrasonic fluid.
All right, we got all the parts back from uh, the cleaning machine. We're going to start by assembling the barrel. The mainspring was in uh, good uh, shape, so we can uh, reuse it. I'm going to use this uh, mainspring winder for that. And while I'm uh, doing this on camera, I wanted to uh, conclude the history about uh, Pierce. So they did uh, succumb in the 70s, as a lot of other brands. There was an effort to revive them back in 2005. Someone uh, bought the brand name and uh, started uh, calling them uh, Pierce 1883. Relatively short-lived. And not a lot of uh, great uh, feedback on those watches, to be honest. And oddly, if you go to Pierce1883.com today, you'll be redirected to uh, what seems like a drop shipping company. Basically cheap Chinese watches in a Daniel Wellington mold. And also some obscurely bad, uh, I don't know, slogans. Break the rules and break free. I mean... What the... And that's not the only thing. There's a lot of uh, Chinglish on that website. This bracelet, for instance. Uh, diving use more heart and wearing pick more convenient. Well, I suppose, yeah. But it is a pretty sad uh, end of the Pierce brand as such. Of course, the legacy is then in these vintage pieces. So uh, for the vintage lovers among us, which pretty much counts uh, probably all of us watching. We can still enjoy some uh, very nice uh, Pierce watches from the golden days. There's no shock setting on this balance, so we're gonna have to take uh, the balance off the cock. Now this one is a little bit tricky because of the way the boot for the index is uh, done. But we manage in the end. And then we have to unscrew the index from underneath and that's also where the cap jewel is. So there is an option to uh, simply oil it from uh, the top but then you're not sure if uh, the cap jewel is completely clean so uh, you should always take it off uh, like we're doing here. It's a bit more work but uh, the results will also be better. And if you're a perfectionist there's not really an option. Now we can put a tiny little bubble of uh, 9010. And then we can place the cock on the top of uh, the capsule. And then get these tiny little screws in. And then we'll do the same thing on the other side. Well, not quite the same, but at least we put oil on uh, the capsule. And yes, it certainly is much easier when you have uh, shock settings. All right, let's get the balance back in place and see if it uh, oscillates. see the index is a little bit uh, off-center due to uh, the way it's fixed. So we're going to slide it gently back to the center. And then let's give it a puff. Now if you look closely we see there's a little wobble in that uh, balance. That's not ideal. We'll see if uh, the watch still runs okay. But this is also then probably the result of not having shock settings. The remedy is really to uh, just change the balance complete. Not too much else you can do. Let's see. We're going to use uh, Epilam or uh, Fixodrop as the product name is on uh, the escape wheel and also on uh, the pallet fork. We put the escape wheel into this little basket that we can then drop into this extreme 
extremely expensive uh, 150 euro jar. Well, slightly less, but uh, still. For the pallet fork, we're not going to put the entire pallet fork into uh, the basket. We are going to dip uh, the pallet jewels in, or the impulse planes of the pallet jewels. That is just to be on a very safe side in terms of any residue coming uh, out of this uh, epilam. And then we we'll put the pivots into some uh, pithwood that will then clean the pivots. All right, let's get on with the uh, assembly of the movement. These old movements have this uh, setting lever screw. We have to remember to put that one in before we put on the barrel bridge, typically. And yes, we did remove that hair from the escape wheel, also from the other wheels. And I'm just praying that my thick mane of uh, nose hair is not going to redo the job those old hairs did. Oh, there's one sneaking in from the side. And that looks like a much freer train. So we have to reduce the slack in the barrel bridge and what we do is basically make the hole smaller and to quote uh, the great Tony Montana Say hello to my little friend and don't let the size fool you This hammer is banned in most uh, civilized countries and just to uh, really emphasize the potential evil of this hammer it is recommended by 9 out of 10 dentists So this bridge is actually very thick, so it is a little bit strange that uh, the hole has been deformed. But as you can see, we use uh, two uh, domed surfaces to uh, basically make the hole a little bit smaller. We want to make it so small that it doesn't really fit. And then we're going to open it up a little bit again with uh, something we call uh, a brooch. And the type of brooch we're going to use is a smoothing brooch. So what the smoothing brooch does is that it uh, compresses the metal in the hole a little bit. So we open the hole up a little bit again. And then we also strengthen the hole a little bit. So after a couple of tries, the bridge uh, fits uh, nicely. And that looks much better. All right, I'm gonna check again that the train runs freely. A little bit of uh, obsessive compulsive disorder is uh, not a bad thing when it comes to uh, watches. I'm gonna put a little bit of uh, thick oil on these different uh, friction points. The oil I'm using is uh, HP 1300, high pressure 1300. You can also use uh, oils like D5. What we want to make sure though is that we use very little oil. It's not much uh, needed. And if you can see the oil, you uh, put too much. Over on the dial side, first thing we're going to do is put in the setting lever. That can be a little bit tricky. And in the keyless works, we use uh, quite a lot of grease. This uh, nice blue color here is the 9504. 
which is uh, my preferred choice for most of the keyless works. It works very well in the high pressure situations and that's exactly uh, what the keyless work uh, is. On the stem I use 8300. Careful with those nose hairs, man. For most of the friction points on the dial side, I uh, use uh, HP 1300. The keyless works in this watch is uh, very straightforward. I think it's a good idea to put the cannon pinion on before you put on uh, the minute wheel. That way you're not gonna risk that you damage the teeth of the minute wheel when you press uh, the cannon pinion on. All right, we're almost uh, done with the keyless works. And that means that we can uh, turn the movement over again. And we can place the pallet fork. And then before we uh, put the balance back in, uh, we need to also lubricate uh, the input surfaces of uh, the pallet uh, jewels. Now we have uh, two cats, so I'm not going to betray their trust by uh, saying that there's a lot of ways to skin <coughs> something. But there are a few different ways of uh, lubricating uh, the pallet stones. I like to do it uh, this way with uh, the pallet in situ. And then gently put a tiny little drop of uh, lubricant on uh, the exit pallet impulse surface. And then we we'll rotate the pallet fork a few times so that you spread that lubricant over the escape wheel teeth. In these old watches, there are uh, typically uh, 15 teeth in escape wheel. So if you do uh, three times oiling, you uh, do five teeth at a time, and that uh, works pretty well. All right, then it's uh, time for the moment of truth. Will it run? Yeah, kind of seems it does. So I guess that uh, nose hair removal uh, we went through uh, helped. Honestly, never seen so much hair in a watch uh, before. It's kind of crazy. A lot of dirt, a lot of hair. So quite a few people in the comment uh, section also asks, uh, how can this get into a watch? And yeah, for this watch, I must say that's a pretty good question. Never seen anything quite like that. But the thing is, uh, a watch is not sealed. It does breathe a little bit, especially these old watches. Most watches made before the 1950s uh, were not really even dust uh, proof. It's also relatively easy to open the case pack, of course, of uh, watches like this. So uh, probably a lot of curious people are looking and when you look into the movement, uh, there will be dust coming in. So that can explain uh, some of it. But again, I've never seen anything like this watch. Anyway. With the driving wheel and the second pinion in place, let's uh, check the time grapher. And that looks actually fairly decent. Of course, we need to adjust the rate and the beat error, but uh, looks all right otherwise. So let's uh, adjust the beat error. To do that, we have to take uh, the balance off the balance cock and simply twist the collet around a little bit on the, the balance arbor. 
And if we're lucky, and uh, maybe after a couple of tries, we do want to get the beat error down to below one millisecond. So we're going to be uh, happy with that. And then let's turn to uh, the complications. As you might understand, uh, this is a bit of a module. So the base caliber is the Pierce 103, and then this would be the 103 CLD or calendar. Again, it's a relatively uh, straightforward uh, exercise in uh, putting all these different wheels in. There is a clear logic. And once you understand that logic, then it's uh, not that difficult. That said, of course, uh, you should take some pictures or uh, a video maybe even. So you do uh, remember where all the different jumpers uh, fit in. So for these driving wheels, you can see uh, they all have uh, small pins. And those pins will then uh, touch one of the wheels and uh, flick them over. And exactly where those pins are in relation to each other will also determine which wheel flips over at which time. And what uh, we want to achieve is to have the date flip over at midnight and then the others in a quick succession thereafter. So with that in mind, we first put in uh, the central uh, date wheel. And then we put in the jumper for the date wheel. And then we can put in a jumper for the weekday. And a jumper for the month. And then the jumper for the moon phase. What you will see is that uh, the moon phase wheel typically has uh, two sides, identical sides. It has uh, 59 teeth. And if each of those teeth is advanced uh, once per day, that means that you have a 29 and a half day per uh, moon cycle, since there are two on the wheel. And that is actually very close to uh, the actual uh, moon cycle. It's so close that uh, you only need to adjust it uh, by one day every couple of years. As I was testing the function, you might have seen that uh, the moon phase actually changed over just before the date did. So to fix that, I need to uh, move the driving wheel for the date a little bit so that it engages uh, slightly earlier. So let's see if that helped. There was the date and there was the moon phase. And that looks good. Before we place the weekday disc, let's have a look at the star wheel on the underside. You see it has uh, seven teeth. While the month uh, star wheel has 12. So no real uh, shocker there, I suppose, but uh, it's just good to see the logic. Before we screw the disc down, we uh, make sure that uh, the jumper engages with the star wheel. Just put a tiny little bubble of uh, D5 on uh, the jumpers. And then with all the discs in place, we can uh, start putting on the correctors. And it really helps uh, having put uh, the screws back in uh, place when you took them off. This movement is actually pretty good in that sense. Uh, the screws are uh, identical. But uh, there are other old movements where you have slightly different screws with slightly different shoulder heights, that kind of thing. And then it's a pretty bad nightmare if you uh, haven't put the screws back in place when you took the parts off. These springs are pretty strong. They have to be in order to get a snappy uh, action when you uh, press the correctors. But it also means you want to be very careful when you're uh, working on parts that have tension like this on them.
weekday corrector and uh, same principle again it's a nice thing with this movement uh, that uh, the parts are different enough that you don't really confuse them if parts are identical then that's fine but if parts are very very similar but not identical then uh, that can be somewhat frustrating and yes that does happen with some very very common movements All right, then we're getting very close to finishing. Uh, let's just check that all the correctors work as they should. That looks all right. And then we can uh, put the dial back on. We did put in a new uh, dial screw as well. Given that the month does not change over automatically, we can place the date hand anywhere we want. As long as it's centered on the date, it doesn't matter. And then once we turn the crown so that the date jumps, we know it's midnight. And then we can place the hour hand at 12. Or thereabouts. So somehow I managed to run out of battery just when I placed the minute hand and didn't notice. But I did place the minute hand. And with the minute hand in place, let's see how close to midnight the date uh, changes. It should be... Uh, between 15 minutes to and fro. Yeah, that's all right. The last thing, let's get uh, the seconds hand on. And there we have it. All right, then uh, for the crystal, let's just toss this old uh, crystal away and get a new one. That looks slightly more shiny. The way we do it uh, with uh, a crystal inside a bezel like this is to basically bend the crystal down a little bit by pressing on it from above. And once it's curved a little bit down, then we can uh, put the bezel onto uh, the crystal. You could also use uh, a crystal lift. I prefer it this way, but uh, as we say in Norway, people's tastes are like a butt. It's split in the middle. Sounds much better in Norwegian, I gotta say. Anyway, there we go. Before we can uh, place the movement into the case, we need to put those uh, pushers back in and put a tiny little drop of HP 1300 in each of uh, the holes for the pushers. say it's a very nice looking dial really like it good design I'm not a hundred percent sure that uh, the hands are completely original given that they're a little bit uh, different colors I would suspect that perhaps the second hand is not uh, original we see the movement stops uh, when we put uh, the watch down 
on the crystal and that's completely normal because uh, the second sand is then uh, stopping against the crystal and once we put the case screws back in so that we lift the movement up a little bit from uh, the crystal uh, the watch starts again so that's nothing to worry about And with a new crystal, uh, I think it's a pretty good looking watch. And let's try all the pushers uh, one last time before we put the watch uh, on the wrist. All right. That looks uh, good. Before seeing the watch on the wrist, I just want to point out that if you're looking for a beautiful vintage watch, then uh, vintagewatchservices.eu always has more than 100 really nice watches available. So check that out. And there we have it. A Pierce triple calendar moon face from the late 1940s. Lovely condition, and it even runs now, and that dial is just very nice. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, then click and like and subscribe will uh, certainly help the channel. We'll be back with another video shortly. Until then, ta-ta.